property managers. Property management is a licensed required activity. In Indiana, it's the same license you are getting now. Indiana works under what's called a unified license, meaning R1 license allows us to buy and sell, trade, residential, commercial, lease, property manage, all of that. Other states are different. Nevada. Nevada requires a second license to be a property manager. You have to be a licensed broker, then go back to school and get a property manager's license to manage property in their state. Our state says, once you get this license, you can manage property. So, uh, property management is a license required activity. All right, so if we're on board so far, everybody give a thumbs up. We, all right, we're sailing. Now, property manager is actually, and we're going to get to this, but right now, just trust me. They actually get conveyed what is called general agency, which is actually one step above a real estate agent. Real estate agent gets what's called special agency, meaning we get to do one activity. Property managers get general agency, and they are going to do several activities for their clients. You know, they may pay the rent uh, or the mortgage payment rather, they may collect rent, they may interview tenants, they may enter into contracts with lawn care. So a general agency allows them to do multiple activities uh, with for their client, whereas a broker, we only typically do one activity. Uh, financing. Financing is the ugly stepsister of uh, real estate because, hey, yeah, I get a financing license. It's like 20 hours. You get it on Friday, take the course over the weekend, test on Monday, and now you're a mortgage loan originator. Now, if you lend other people's money, you guys have heard of this term, right? OPM, OPM. If you use OPM, or uh, I'm sorry, let me clarify, OPM, that's other people's money, you have to have a mortgage loan originator's license. Even those guys in the bank, when you walk into like Fifth Third and say, hey, I wanna get a home loan, and they say, well, come over here and sit down, and they start filling out, they have got a loan originator's license. Why? Because they are actually loaning out someone else's money. We're going to talk about one of my favorite topics later in the chat uh, book, where I tell you that banks actually have no money. It's their investors. So the, even the people that work at the bank have a loan originator's license. You can have a loan originator's license and a real estate license at the same time. I actually have both. I'm a licensed loan originator and I'm a licensed real estate broker. You can do the same client as well. It becomes kind of tricky and you have to have some disclosures. So in theory, I could have a client where I help them get their loan and also get their house. There are more than several people in our industry here in the Indianapolis area that are both a licensed loan originator and a licensed real estate broker. It is possible to hold two of them, all right? Now, in this section, I want you to write in your book, and occasionally there'll be some things that I have you write in your book. Here's one I wanna go over. There are two other terms here that we're gonna talk about. And a lot of people in the industry or outside of the industry use these words interchangeably, lender and mortgage broker. Well, one of the key things about this course you're going to learn is it is terminology dependent. 
meaning there are terms that you're going to relearn because the correct usage is very key, especially when we're dealing with each other. The consumer who is unlearned sometimes doesn't know what they really mean. This is the first prime example. There are two different types of people. There is a lender and there is a mortgage broker. A lot of people think a mortgage broker is a lender. No, they are not. A lender is the guy that actually puts their hand in the pocket and gives them money. A mortgage broker, there's that word again, broker. A mortgage broker is very analogous to a real estate broker. In real estate brokerage, what do we do? We bring buyers and sellers together. A mortgage broker does the exact same concept. They bring buyers and sellers together. Only in this case, the buyer is the borrower of money and the seller of the money guesses who? This person, the lender. All right, so follow me here for a minute. Could a buyer walk up to a house, <clears throat> excuse me, and say, I wanna buy that house and not use a real estate agent? Yes, they can entirely. The problem is if that seller says, no, I don't wanna sell. So then the buyer walks to the next house and goes, hey, you wanna sell your house? And the buyer and the seller says, no, I don't wanna sell. And he spends all day trying to find the house he likes. Or he could call a real estate broker and say, find me a house with three bedrooms, two baths, 1,500 square feet. And then he go off to work. We do all of the searching and come back to our client and go, hey, look, here's four or five houses that are actively selling. Which one would you like to go look at? and he chooses, and we have simplified the process for him. That same analogy is used as a mortgage broker. In theory, someone wanting to borrow money could walk into Fifth Third and go, hey, I wanna borrow a lump money, and they're like, hey, we're out of money, or we don't do that loan, or you don't qualify, and he's like, okay. So he walks across the street to Nat City, wanna borrow money, hey, you know, and he could do that all day. Or he could call a mortgage broker and make one application and say, here's my credit score, here's how much money I make, here's my down payment, and then go back to work. And the mortgage broker that works with many different lenders, trying to point to that circle, would find four or five suitable mortgages and go back to the buyer client and go, here's four mortgages, which one would you like? So the mortgage broker is very similar to a real estate broker insofar as all they do is connect buyers and sellers together. A lender is a person who puts their hand in their pocket and comes up with the money, all right? Now, so you've got a lender and a mortgage broker. And if that doesn't confuse you, this will. There are some that are both. A good example would be like Bailey and Wood, big on the south side here in Indianapolis. They actually lend money or depending on the case of the client, they may broker that client to another lender. So they actually can be both as well. They could be a lender and a mortgage broker. Whereas Five Stones Mortgage, I am a partner in ownership with a gentleman named Colin Hedegaard. We are just mortgage brokers. We do not lend our money we deal with about seven other lenders. Quicken's one of them, by the way. United Mortgage, Carrington. We, let, we broker their money to buyers. We are just a broker. 
So make sure you understand lender versus broker. All right. Are we good? <clears throat> cool. In your book, the next section is called subdivider and developer. I want you to write in your book. And a lot of times if there's no nothing in there, I will tell you to write in your book. And here's the case. I want you to write the word builder in your book as being the third person in this trio, the subdivider, the developer, and the builder. And what happens is this farmer has a hundred acres of land and he sells that hundred acres to a subdivider who is going to go in and subdivide this into big areas. That's what a subdivider would do. He would then potentially sell this to a developer who's going to go in and develop this land. As you can tell, artis artistic design is not my specialty. I'm a numbers guy. So we'll have to go the best we can with some of my drawings. <clears throat> the developer is going to go in and put the roads in. He may put some lampposts in. He's going to put the playground and develop it. All right. And then that he's going to create lots. And that lot would get sold to the builder. And then the builder builds a house on it. That's the top view of a house as you're looking down. It's not an envelope or anything like that. I know it looks like a retarded St. Bernard drew it, but um, that's the best we got, okay? So then the builder would then sell that to the consumer. I'm supposed to be a stick guy. Eh, whatever. So you've got three people combined. You've got the subdivider, the developer, and the builder. <clears throat> now, as a general rule of thumb, here's what you're going to see. As a general rule of thumb, the subdivider, the developer, and the builder, typically on the lower end houses, are the same company. Davis Homes, Dura, C.P. Morgan, things like that. They tend to be the same company and they do it all within the same company. As the price of the house goes up, more likely will you have these people being separated simply because of the costs involved to buy a lot or five. My favorite example is Kensington Grove, which is right across the street from Center Grove High School. You know, all those houses are 500, 600, 800,000. And what you've got is four or five builders in there. You got Ron Wampler, you got Michael Duke. Uh, there's a couple others, Greg Gernick, I think. Uh, but the point being is because of those are so high end, the builder cannot afford to buy a hundred lots at a time. So subdivider, developer, and builder all go together. Now here's the key. They are not licensed required entities. As far as the real estate world goes, now they may have other licenses, and we're not worried about that. We're talking about the actual real estate portion. You guys wanna be a land developer? Here you go. You are now conferred, just start telling people you're land developers because there is no license required for that, okay? Home inspector. Home inspector is now a license required activity. This became about in like about 2010 or 2011. Used to be if you had a flashlight and a ladder, you were a home inspector. Now they actually go to school. Actually, the home inspection school, which we teach here at Real University, is probably one of the hardest schools. It actually has a hands-on component. You want to get your home inspector's license, you will do 40 hours of class 
and then you go out in the field and actually do 20 hours in the field of actual inspection hands-on. I think this is a genius idea and I think that would be kind of cool for us to kind of do that. You know, hey, pass the course, go out and shadow somebody for a week, then take the exam, all right? That may help.